So we are going to look at an example of an inner semi-direct product using the dihedral group of order 2n. Now I have another video that explains exactly how semi-direct products work, so you can check the video in the description for an explanation of that. In order to get a semi-direct product, our first step is to find two subgroups which are complements in D2n. In order to do that, we can use the subgroup generated by R and the subgroup generated by S. These turn out to be complements, so let's prove that these are complements. First of all, we need to show that the subgroup generated by R times the subgroup generated by S gives us the entire group D2n. Well, we know that every element in the dihedral group can be written as r to the k times either e or r to the k times s. So every element is some rotation and then possibly a reflection. And because of this, we know that r to the k is in this first subgroup and e and s are both in this second subgroup. So every element can be written as a product, one in here, one in here, and therefore this product gives us the entire group. The second condition we need is that the intersection, R intersect with S, is just equal to the identity element. But we know that this subgroup right here, the subgroup generated by S, this set just contains the identity element and S. And we know that S is not a rotation. This is a reflection. So S is not an element of the subgroup generated by R. We can't write it as R to the K. And therefore, these subgroups don't intersect at S, so they only intersect at the identity. And right there, that gives us the intersection argument that we need. So we've satisfied both conditions, and that means that the subgroup generated by R and the subgroup generated by S, those are complements in D2n. The last thing we need is that one of these subgroups has to be a normal subgroup in D2n. And it turns out that the subgroup generated by rotations is normal because if we look again, the elements in this subgroup are E and S. So we can think about conjugating the elements in R by each of these elements. E times R to the K times E inverse, this is obviously just R to the K because E is the identity. And then if we look at S R to the K, S inverse, we know that S times R to the K, that's equal to R to the negative K times S. This is one of the rules we know about the dihedral group. And so over here, S S inverse is gonna cancel out we get r to the negative k. And this is an element of the subgroup generated by r, which means that if we start with an element in this subgroup and we conjugate it by something else outside of the subgroup, we're still going to stay in the subgroup. And therefore, this is a normal subgroup of D2n. And that means we have everything that we need to get a semi-direct product of the dihedral group. We can write D2n as the semi-direct product of the subgroup generated by R with the subgroup generated by S. Now the elements in this semi-direct product are going to be ordered pairs where the first element is in this first subgroup and the second element is in the second subgroup. So I'm going to say H is an element of the subgroup generated by S by definition. And we know how to multiply two elements in an inner semi-direct product. If we have some ordered pair r to the a comma h1, and we multiply that by r to the b comma h2, when we're doing an inner semi-direct product, this has to be equal to r to the a times h1 r to the b h1 inverse comma h1 h2. And so, because we know how to multiply elements in the dihedral group, this gives us a complete description of the semi-direct product. But we can describe this multiplication more abstractly if we say h1 r to the b h1 inverse is equal to psi sub h1 of r to the b. That's what this psi right here in the semi-direct product is doing. It's really telling us how do we conjugate elements. And so if we can define psi 
for each element in both of the subgroups. That gives us a more abstract way to talk about the multiplication so that we can keep these two subgroups separate instead of actually multiplying them on the inside here. Now there are two elements in the subgroup generated by s, so we can just list what does psi do to the elements in this first subgroup for each element in s. First of all, let's look at the identity. What is psi sub e of r to the b? Well, by definition, again, this is the conjugations. So this is e, r to the b, e inverse. But the identity doesn't do anything, so all we're left with is r to the b. And so we get that psi sub e of r to the b just gives us r to the b back. And on the other hand, if we look at s, which is the other element in this subgroup, this is going to be s, r to the b, s inverse. And we saw earlier when we were looking at the normal subgroup condition, this equals r to the negative b, because we can flip these two so we get r to the negative b times s. So this gives us a complete description of the conjugation that we're looking at here without ever talking about actually multiplying r times s. We say psi sub e of r to the b equals r to the b, and psi sub s of r to the b equals r to the negative b. And using this definition, we can go back up here and take out the conjugation. And we can just write psi sub h1 of r to the b. So this gives us a way to separate those two subgroups. And we can use this map to talk about the multiplication. Now here's the big reason that we want to replace the conjugation of the elements by this map psi. The reason is that we no longer have elements multiplying between the two subgroups. And that means that we can get even more abstract than we are here, because we can replace each of these groups by a different group that's isomorphic. In particular, we know in D2n that the subgroup generated by r, this is all of the rotations, r, r squared, r cubed, up to r to the n, which is just the identity. So this is isomorphic to the group integers mod n. And the isomorphism is by taking r to the k and mapping it to just the integer k mod n. We can do the same thing over here with the subgroup generated by s. Subgroup generated by s, this is isomorphic to the integers mod 2. Because s squared equals the identity element, just like over here, 1 plus 1 equals 0 mod 2. And this isomorphism is going to take the identity element to 0 and the reflection element s to 1. Now what we can do here is we can take this semi-direct product and replace all of the groups r and s with their isomorphic groups by replacing every element with its image under the isomorphism. So let's see what happens if we do that. Now we're not looking at r and s anymore. So when we look up here at this semi-direct product, we're not going to be looking at the semi-direct product between r and s. Instead, r is going to become z sub n, and s is going to become z sub 2. So what happens when we do this? Well, the elements, instead of looking like r to the k comma h, they're going to look like the images under the isomorphism. Instead of r to the k, we're just going to have the integer k mod n. And instead of e or s, we're going to have another integer, which is either 0 or 1 mod 2. It's going to look like a comma x, where each of these are integers mod n and mod 2. So if we look over here at this multiplication, r to the a corresponds to a, and h1 corresponds to some integer x under this isomorphism. Similarly, over here, r to the b is going to map to b, and then we have some other integer y. Now when we multiply these two, we're going to get first of all r to the a, that becomes a, and then remember that in the integers mod n, the group operation is addition. So we're going to have a plus psi sub, this first element is x, of b, comma, h1, h2, that becomes x plus y. Again, the group operation is addition. And so now we have multiplication that's describing the dihedral group 
without ever talking about rotations, without ever talking about reflections. The last thing we have to do here is say, what exactly is this map psi? But that's really easy because we already have the map psi for the original groups. So we just have to switch everything out with the image under the isomorphism. Again, if we're looking at this psi here, the identity element in Z2, that's just zero. R to the B goes to B. R to the B again goes to B. And then over here, S gets mapped to one. So we have psi sub one of B. That's equal to negative B. And this gives us a complete description of psi because these are all the elements in Z mod two. That's all we need to describe the dihedral group. Now I think to appreciate just how cool inner semi-direct products are, it helps to look at a few examples of what multiplication looks like in the original group versus in the inner semi-direct product. So let's look at our first example here in the original dihedral group. What is R to the four times the identity element and then times R cubed S. Now if we do this, of course, the identity doesn't do anything. So we're going to multiply these two, r to the fourth times r cubed. That gives us r to the seventh. And then we leave the s on the side. Now, what does this look like when we're in the semi-direct product? Well, r to the four times the identity element. In the semi-direct product, that corresponds to the element 4, 0. This is the element in the subgroup generated by r. And this is the element in the subgroup generated by S after we do this isomorphism. The second element, R cubed times S, that's three comma one. Now let's do this multiplication according to the rule that we have right here. This is going to be first, this element here, four plus psi sub, this first thing, zero of three comma zero plus one. Now if we do this, we said that psi sub zero is just the identity operation. We're just going to get three back. So here we have four plus three, that's seven. And of course, zero plus one is one. Notice this, r to the seventh times s, that corresponds to seven comma one. This gives us the right answer for multiplication in the original group. Let's look at one more example. Say we take r to the fifth times s, and then we multiply that by r to the sixth times s. Now in the dihedral group, we know that s times r to the sixth, we can switch these two and that becomes uh, in here, r to the negative six times s. And this s times s is gonna cancel out and we just have r inverse as our final result. Now let's see what that looks like in the semi-direct product. These elements are going to be five comma one and six comma one. When we multiply these using this rule, that's going to equal five plus psi one of six comma one plus one. Now we know psi one of six, that's going to give us negative six. So here we have five minus six, which is a negative one and one plus one is zero, just like S times S is the identity. And so this gives us again, the element corresponding to our inverse. We get the same answer. So this is really the power of an inner semi-direct product. We can talk about the dihedral group without talking about rotations or reflections or polygons or anything like that, just by talking about integers and a simple map like this. Once we have this map psi that encodes conjugation in the original group, we can replace each group in the semi-direct product by some other group that's isomorphic, but that is easier to deal with. And just like that, we can get a very abstract description of a concrete group, and that's the power of inner semi-direct products.